Oh dear. Complicated. Complicated. We have to do this. Yeah. Oh, we have to do that too. Welcome back. Last keynote, and I am impressed all awake and up again. Uh, we had a lovely party uh, last night, and I hope the social event was to your liking. Yes, I like it. <laughs> uh, social media reports interesting things. Just be aware some interesting things better should be kept to ourselves. <laughs> Oh, no, that's you. That's me. That's oh. you again. Oh, yeah. all right. So as Once the, we had to. <laughs> as the conference winds down, we're going to hear right now from one of the leading CEOs in Germany. But first, I want to take a final opportunity to honor our friends and colleagues in IS that are earning some of this year's most prestigious accolades. Before I, in order to do so, we're going to welcome up to the stage AIS President-elect Brian Fitzgerald. Thank you, Jane and Helmut. It gives me a great honor today to be presenting the AIS Sandra Slaughter Service Award. So on a personal note, I first met Sandy Slaughter at the Doctoral Consortium in Vancouver in 1994. We were both there. She was the brightest person there and won the award, but she was also the nicest person. Uh, and it's really uh, nice, uh, ironic they can do this. So the Sandra Slaughter Service Award recognizes long-standing members who have provided leadership within the association, particularly through such activities as participating in the SIGs, chapters, and colleges, striking the conferences, and participating in AIS-sponsored journals. This year's Sandra Slaughter Service Awards winners are, oh, sorry, I have to go forward here. So Alana Mitchell, Drake University, Keng Sao, uh, Missouri Uni University of Science and Technology. Catherine Chudoba, Utah State University. Lapo Mola, University of Côte d'Azur. Guy Gable, Queensland University of Technology. And Bernard Tan, Nash University of Singapore. So for many years, ACM SIG MIS has graciously sponsored, com committed to sponsoring the dissertation awards. And again this year, they have sponsored this outstanding award. Please welcome Heng Su to the stage to present the ACM SIG MIS Best Dissertation Award. to thank the panel of judges who generously give their time to act to evaluate and rank multiple dissertations this year at the end of the evaluation process three best dissertations stood out and I would like to first announce our runner-ups for this year's SIG MIS dissertation competition well these two runner-ups are not in any particular order. And first, I would like to announce Zhe Zhang, supervised by Professor Bei Bei Li at CMU for the dissertation titled Societal Impacts of Information Technology, Evidence from AI and Sharing Economy. 
And the second runner-up is Hilla Levengiva, supervised by Professor Gao Ostricher Sanger at Tel Aviv University for the dissertation titled Individual Empowering Platforms, Effects on In-Platform Dynamics and Outcomes. And I would like to do this in a group because to me, I think three dissertations are really wonderful dissertations are all in high quality. So the winner, but we were told that we can only have one winner. So the winner goes to Saga Santami, supervised by Dr. Xin Chun Chen at the University of Arizona for a dissertation titled Developing Proactive Cyber Threat Intelligence from the Online Hacker Community, a Computational Design Science Approach. And next. Next, I would invite all these three awardees to the stage. I would now invite to the stage Chrysanthi uh, Aguro, who represents the Committee for the Senior Scholars Awards for the best IS publications of the year of the 2019. It's such a pleasure to present the Senior Scholars Best Paper Awards for papers published in 2018. I'm Chrysanthi Avgeru, and the committee is, who handled the process is Dubravka Tsetsis Kesmanovic and Samit Sarka. Uh, Dubravka will present the process that we followed, and Samit will present the awards. <laughs> Okay, that's us. And uh, um, as you may all know, that um, all the journals, uh, are invi journals are invited to submit their proposals for the best paper uh, published in this year, this time in 2018. And uh, we received 28 nominations uh, for the best paper. And uh, we asked uh, 43 senior scholars to volunteer to evaluate uh, these nominated papers. And each scholar handled uh, four papers and gave uh, scores for four nominated papers. And each paper was assessed by five scholars. So what we did as a committee, we calculated the final scores and we selected the top best five. Uh, the only decision that actually we made, we decided um, not to award just four, but to award five, because scores are so close. And this uh, group of five was distinguished from the rest. So this is why we decided to award four, five. So the awards are. Thank you, Dubravka. Well, I get the pleasure of actually announcing the award winners. Uh, and uh, I should apologize up front if I mispronounce some of the names. Uh, some of these names are a little tricky for me to uh, uh, pronounce. So uh, I hope I don't uh, I'll get it as close as possible. Uh, so the, the, the first uh, uh, paper uh, is titled uh, Design Principles for Sensemaking Support Systems in Environmental Sustainability Transformations. Uh, this uh, appeared in the European Journal of Information Systems. It has uh, five authors, 
Stefan Seidel, Leona Chandra Cruz, Nadine Jekeli, Michael Gao, and Daniel Steiger. And the <laughs> And while they come up to the stage, the affiliations are University of Liechtenstein and University of Innsbruck. The next uh, winner, uh, and I should probably make uh, one uh, note. Uh, these are in no particular order. Actually, the, our goal was to just pick the top five, and so these are in no particular order, or maybe alphabetical in some manner. Uh, the alphabetical according to the journals. Alphabetical according to the journals. Thank you. <laughs> the, the title for the next uh, winner is Collaboration Risk Management in IT Enabled Asymmetric Partnerships Evidence from Telescope Networks. Uh, the journal is Information Organization. The authors are Rajendra Singh, Arun Baird, and Lars Mathiasen. And the university of, uh, the author affiliations are University of Oklahoma and Georgia State. The next winner, uh, aligning with new digital strategy, a dynamic capabilities approach. Uh, the journal is Journal of Strategic Information Systems. The authors are Adrian Yao, Christina So, and Rina Hansen. And the affiliations are Singapore University, Nanyang Technological University, and Copenhagen Business School. The next winner is uh, the paper title, uh, Beyond the Privacy Paradox, Objective Versus Relative Risk in Privacy Decision Making. Uh, the journal is MI Quarterly. The authors are Idris Ajarid, Ial Peer, and Alessandro Acquisti. The affiliations are University of Notre Dame, Barilan University, and Carnegie Mellon University. Next uh, winner is addressing key challenges to making enterprise blockchain applications a reality. The journal is MIS Quarterly Executive. Um, Mary Lassity is the author, 
and uh, the affiliation is the University of Arkansas. I guess that is it from our awards. And uh, I, I probably need to invite uh, uh, the Jane and Helmut uh, back on stage. It's our great pleasure to be able to introduce to you some authors who participated in the ICIS Paperathon. The ICIS Paperathon was piloted in 2017, and it continues to be an appealing event for conference attendees. This year's Paperathon helped to facilitate new research collaborations, develop research ideas, and accelerate the publication review process. Very important. We have three groups that participated in the paperthon that, again, are in no particular order, uh, produced some research proposals or progress on research um, that we would like to uh, recognize at this time. The first, the generativity of industrial IoT platforms beyond predictive maintenance by Tobias Pauli, University of Erlangen, Nuremberg, and Jan Pei Lin, the University of Queensland. Second, the use hackathons as an enabler of digital transformation by Deanna House, University of Tampa, my mentee, I'm very happy. Um, Ibrahim Anua from American University of Nigeria, and I want to thank him in particular because he is one of the travel grant awardees and obviously used that very well to uh, come up with some really great research, so I'm appreciative to Ibrahim for that and Kodrina Louth from Copenhagen Business School. Finally, building trust in AI through personalization of explanations, Christian Meske, Freie Universität Berlin, maybe, and Einstein Center for Digital Research, as well as Nicholas Kuhl, oh, I got all the German names, Karlsruhe University of Technology, and Jody Lobanya from McMaster University. So join me in a uh, showing them some appreciation for their hard work and encouraging them to get these papers published as soon as they possibly can. Thank you all. So thank you all for your amazing work in preparing and things. Now we would like to welcome our esteemed colleague and friend, Bastian Nominacher, co-CEO and co-founder of Salonis a leader in turning process insights into action for business transformation. He's responsible for the global go-to-market, partnerships, finance, and operations. As one of the entrepreneurial founders, Bastian, I think was pleased to accept the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award on behalf of Salonis in 2016. That was planned to <laughs> give you more interactivity. Exactly. So I'll do that here. Um, and also, I think, a prize for the um, by the president as a future award. Uh, before that, he worked at a number of leading consulting companies. Uh, he graduated from the finance information management program jointly done by the University of Augsburg. I see Uli Bull somewhere here um, and uh, T. Munich. Honestly, I'm very happy that I at least was allowed to grade the bachelor thesis. Bastian. So thank you, just bringing up the slides, but uh, maybe let me say a few words beforehand. So I'm really humbled and it's a great honor to be here today. When I, in 2010, uh, uh, presented my paper at ISIS on IT challenges in M&A transactions, I would have never imagined that I can speak to all of you here. And uh, yeah, uh, it's been really a, a, an honor basically. And uh, as Professor Kretschmer pointed it out there, um, when doing the the, the film degree, this I think was a great opportunity to early on get in touch in the, with the research community. In my presentation today, I wanna talk about four topics. So, um, 
first of all, we want to talk about our story. So how we took basically a business problem, brought it together with a powerful concept, which was already developed in academia and created a new category, an area in the yeah, IT system space where a completely new type of software is required, which builds a new market, which has fueled the growth of Zelonas, bringing us from a, a startup uh, founded by three people to a unicorn, which is valued now more than 2.5 billion. Then I want to talk about the process movement, what we call enterprise performance acceleration. So how we enable our customers, our uh, organizations work with our technology to accelerate the business. I think the most important is always seeing the technology with their own eyes. So we'll show you a demo and then talk about what is really important for us, how we democratize the access to our technology, how we work with you as an academic community, as an important accelerator uh, to build this technology. So just need to get this thing working. One second. Okay. So. Let's get started. How do we get into this entire thing? So uh, I thought I brought a bring a photo with you. So uh, you see the, it's a, a bit of dated photos. This is in 2011 when we just were basically graduating. So this is Martin, my uh, co-founder. He studied uh, information system uh, computer science at uh, TUM and Alex studied math and I studied film at TU. We met at Academy Consult, it's a student-run consultancy, and what drove us basically there is we were doing consulting projects and we discovered that there is actually a gap in how people try to optimize processes towards what they have as available tools. Because there is methods like, for example, doing interviews, uh, modeling processes, brown paper sessions. So some of you might have been part to such things. But we felt this is not, yeah, it's not the right and sufficient thing. And how did we come to that? I want to talk to you about our first project and how we discovered that. And then how we took an academic concept, applied to that, and basically built our company based upon that. So this is our first customer. This is basically the Bavarian Broadcasting Company, the local media firm. Um, if you go down to the central station in Munich, you will see their skyscraper. It's not a New York-style skyscraper, but a Munich-style skyscraper. So, um, but nonetheless, they had a very visionary CEO, and he said to us, hey, Bastian, I need to fix my incident process. Incident process means if their uh, laptop breaks down, if a printer is not working, People need to do their work and they need to have reliable IT systems in place. So we're exactly doing this kind of exercise, asking the people what are the issues, why things are not going the right way. And what we discovered is you ask 10 people, you get 12 opinions. It's a very laborsome process and somehow we didn't yield good results. We were always very ambitious. Like uh, the CEO, he's called Josef, said to me, um, I want to bring it down from five days average resolution time to one. So an enormous reduction. And we asked ourselves, how can we accomplish this? And as we had all a very technical background, what we basically did is we found out everything what's going on there is actually locked in an IT system. So this is an BMC Remedy IT service management system. So I sort of bring you the screenshot to just give you a feeling what this is. This is, for you as all the researchers, this is just a workflow management system. There's many of them available and they are like the key productivity driver in many of the companies, systems like SAP, ServiceNow, Salesforce, driving that. So we took that data and we knew it's everything there and we wanted to know what's going on. And then we combined it because we knew that uh, there was the process mining research there, what University of Eindhoven and others work from Will and other researchers were there and combined this. So basically we took this data, which we extracted from the databases, and wrote the first version of Celonis. Very basic, not what you will see later on in the demo. It literally took an hour for every view to compile it in SQL, then run another hour and make a printout. So in the first meetings, they showed up like with a big bag of 300 printouts, and we put them to the wall. But the important thing was, it has a massive impact. They were so excited, and even with this first project, we could make uh, Joseph happy, and we delivered, and we brought it down from five days to one. And this was the starting point, which gave us the confidence to basically start Salonis, move our three guys into my flat, and building the company, and build it up on it. What has been very crucial for us is a very close cooperation with the academic community for two reasons. On the one hand, said continuous innovation, or as uh, Will put it very vividly, he has uh, seen uh, a very powerful adoption of the academic concept, things like, we have, like conformance checking and others brought into the product, but also from a talent basis, because it's absolutely crucial that we have the right employees. Celonis has now grown to about 800 employees, about 30% of them are from TU Munich, and it's not only TU Munich, all the leading 
organization. This is really, really important, and I will also later touch up on that. We build for the next generation. We need to educate them. We need to give them the right kind of sk uh, skills. And also for me as an entrepreneur, we couldn't build a company if we not have basically your partnership and working with the academic community. So we did the first project at the Bavarian Broadcasting Company, and then we came up with that. So this is the first version of Celonis. It's not as pretty as the software now is, but it was the starting point. And I'm really proud to say that now many of the largest companies in the world are using Celonis, optimizing their processes, and we have created a new category which employs thousands and thousands of people around the world, transforms how processes are running. And it's actually even relevant for your own publishing processes. I was just sitting there, and I heard like you want to publish as soon as possible. The good thing is even Celonis is supporting there. Elsevier is a Celonis customer. If you publish into an Elsevier journal, a Celonis system is sitting in the background. More than 300 Elsevier employees are working with it to streamline the actual publication process. So I think that's also quite a cool reference applying to your own day-to-day -day processes with a massive impact. Imagine if you can just sh uh, sh shorten down by 50% the publication time, what compounding effect this will have on the research. It's quicker out, you can quicker build on that, and it accelerates the entire research process. So you might ask yourself, Process mining, we have already known for quite some time in uh, academic research that it's a powerful concept. Why did it take so long to get going in academia, uh, in the practice, until the industry adopted in the massive momentum which we are seeing now, and which probably has only taken up in the last two to three years, even like 18 months ago, only two uh, business research analyst firms, Gartner basically and Forrester have been covering it. Now everyone are covering that and it's their most inquiry subject. And I want to talk a bit about there what I call the process movement in which we summarize under enterprise performance acceleration. So process mining itself, it's a fairly simple pro uh, concept. You have real world activities, so stuff going on in reality, and this can be everything, from in a warehouse uh, taking out goods uh, to handing in a paper for submission, um, handling an incident as we see here beforehand. And this is supported by IT systems. IT systems like an SAP system, like a Salesforce system, like custom-made applications. IT is an enormously strong productivity driver. And that's why it's also so broadly used because it's the easiest way to speed up a process, to digitalize them, to bring it there. The good news for us is, and also for process mining, you only need quite a limited amount of data. You need a timestamp, you need what's going on in an ID. Almost every transaction system in the world is storing this. And then you apply that Salonis technology on top of and seeing really what's going on. You will see it in a few minutes in a live demo how this is working. But this is very, very powerful. So why did it now take some time? And why is it now more than ever relevant to apply this technology? And you need an enterprise performance acceleration layer, something on top of that. If you look into that, you will see that, like, Quite some time ago, the IT systems were mostly monolithic. You have this wall-to-wall -wall core systems, especially from a commercial operation point of view, having like a big SAP system, Oracle system, or other vendors covering the majority of the relevant business processes in our customers. But with the advent of the cloud systems, you see more and more companies augmenting this with best-of-breed cloud solutions. You put, for example, a CRM system in the cloud, you have an Ariba system which handles your procurement, you have ServiceNow, you have marketing automation software. So you bolt on to your digital core more and more capabilities, which is good because you can use the latest technology adopted, automize more parts of your business and increase your uh, businesses operations. But it's even extending not only the core systems and the cloud systems, you have edge systems, which is sensors, which is things like uh, microservices and bots, which are part of your IT landscape, where you might deploy RPA technology, where you have an RF uh, ID scanner, or even an intelligent manufacturing lane. And we still have like the very, very basic stuff which is basically automation, or not even automation, process being handled by simple workflow tools like Excel, like um, Outlook. This is stuff which we cover with our task mining capability. So if you run a business, if you want to fully utilize the available technology stack, you have quite a fragmented landscape. You have made massive investments into that, but you need to ensure your business performance. And this is what Celonis actually does. You have a layer on top of that, what we call enterprise performance acceleration, tap in all the data and making sure they run fast, efficient, and reliable and make your customers happy. And that's exactly where we see this momentum because the companies need to leverage that. They have made massive investments there and put the Celonis the technology on top of that. So how did we do that? And this is the last slide before we jump really 
into seeing the technology. We combined, we built basically on this powerful research which comes from the process mining domain and bolted on several uh, uh, concepts. In the collect area, we built a powerful ETL stack which connects to all the systems and the process of creating event log, which was previously, even until the fourth generation of the Celonis software, a highly manual process, is fully integrated now in the intelligent business cloud. Then you have the discover capabilities, which discover basically means the classical process mining. If some of you have seen it already, it's basically showing the process, seeing what's going on. So this is for analysts, for data scientists. But our customers really had the wish that it needs to be also operatively aligned. So that's why you see on the right hand side, enhance and monitor capability. Enhance meaning really operatively improving the process, interacting there, enhancing that what we have is our action engine, other capabilities. And last but not least, there's a lot of humans involved in that. So having the change management capabilities in place, what we have our monitor capabilities. So taking basically from all the relevant academic domains, from process mining, from ETL, from data warehousing, how you handle this is enormous, this is terabytes of data, you handle it, data visualization, uh, artificial intelligence, bringing it together in a turnkey solution. And I now wanna ask uh, Ruben to join me on stage to show you basically how this uh, runs in reality, showing an example how uh, Celunus is used. So Ruben, ready to roll. Thank you, Basti. Give me that one, thank you. All right, so for this demo, we are all taking on, actually I think one of the most important and busiest jobs that are out there during Christmas time. So we are all becoming an order manager. So I am James now, I am an order manager and it is actually my job to ensure that orders, or in other words, Christmas presents, are delivered on time to our customers. And the good news is I'm working at a company that is a, Salonis customer. And this in turn means that I do, do not need to have a look at this all the time. So this is an ERP system and I do not need to go this or through this long list of orders, hundreds of orders, actually having no clue where to start and what to do next. Instead, Salonis in real time tells me which orders I should actually focus my energy on. So this is what happens here. So Silonis tells me at any time, what can I actually do to fix process issues before they are even there? So let's have a look at an example here. So here, for example, Silonis tells me that based on historical data, the busy warehouse is predicted for Friday. And the recommendation is basically, okay, we should ship a certain order right now as express delivery to ensure on-time delivery. Or even better, not only focusing on this single order, Solonis tells me, okay, maybe it would be best due to this high predicted sales order volume on Friday, which is higher than 10,000 orders on this day, maybe it might be best to stuff one additional resource to then increase the on-time delivery rate on this day by 57%. And I do get all the relevant uh, context information here. So I do see, okay, what order is it actually? What is it about? But also I do see the predictions for the upcoming days. So the predicted sales order volume, the predicted on-time delivery rate, or how I can actually improve it. And this is already extremely valuable if you think about it, because I can take this information, I can go back into the SAP system, for example, and I could ship exactly this order as express delivery. But we can also take it one step further. Wouldn't it be even better if we can directly trigger this action from within Salonis? And this is exactly what just happened. So by clicking on this button here, a workflow was triggered, entering the SAP system, creating an express delivery for exactly this order, and then also, as we can see, the warehouse and the customer has been notified. And this is great, and this is what we think at Salonis is really a smarter way of working. And the question is, how do we actually get there? So how can we achieve this? So now I'm not James anymore, back to being Reuven, and we can take a look behind the scenes. So what do we actually need to do to get to this point? So first of all, as we've heard before, we need to collect the relevant data. 
for James's company, we needed to connect to an SAP system and additionally one customized warehouse system that they have in place. And to do so, this is exactly where the event collection comes into play. So the event collection is our integrated ETL tool, which basically looks like this. So here, the first thing that we need to do is to establish a continuous connection to our source system. So this is what I already did up front. So here, basically see, okay, the connection to the SAP system, we see the connection to um, the warehouse system, which is customized, and then what we need to do now is to, well, specify which tables to extract from those systems, and how do we actually need to transform the data to do process mining. And then, as a last step, is about to set up the data model that we can then start analyzing the process. And the good news is we are going to do this right now together, but we do not have to start from scratch. So for this, we can actually leverage the App Store that we have in place where we basically store all the knowledge that we built up in the last couple of years together with our customers. So here in the App Store, you do find hundreds of out-of-the-box best practice analysis for many, many business problems. And also, you will find, well, ready-to-use process connectors for many systems and for even more different processes. So in this case, for James's company, we are looking at an order to cash process mainly happening in SAP. So we can directly start just installing this process connector package here. And as soon as this installation is finished, once we have this, what we have is that the SAP part of the process is already connected. So we have all the extractions that we need. So which tables do we actually want to extract from SAP? And also the transformations are already there. So let's have a quick look. So this is what comes directly out of the App Store. So here, all the tables that we need to extract are specified from SAP, and we also do have our transformations. So how do we actually need to transform the data and where to find the relevant data? So we can have a look at this. So this is based on, as you can see, SQL, and Solonis already knows where to look for the right and relevant data. And then, I mean, what we can do then as, let's say, as a data scientist, of course, we can edit it, we can configure it in a way, and we can also connect the customized part of the process, which mainly happens then in this customized warehouse system. And once we have done this, and once we have executed all those transformations here, we have the right data, and the last thing that we need to do is to set up the data model. And this is what also happened beforehand, because, I mean, the Zelonis App Store here helped us, so the data model that we see here was already set up, and the only thing that we need to do then is to add the additional customized tables that we want to look at. So for example, from this customized system. And as you can see, this is a relational data model, and that means that you do not have to waste time slicing and dicing the data. You can just take the raw tables from the source systems, and you can then connect them via drag and drop and using those foreign keys between the tables. So this makes it really quick also to enrich your data model with all the data that you actually want to analyze. And once this is done, we do only have to, well, basically load the data and we are good to go and good to discover the process. So this is then the next step, really to see, okay, where do we have inefficiencies? And for James's company, what are, for example, the factors that are driving the on-time delivery rate? And this is what we are going to do right now. So this is what we call process analytics, where we really get a deep understanding of what is going on in the process. If we first of all focus on the right side, we see in total we follow almost one million sales order items through the process across those source systems, departments, and any other units. And we see that basically 62% of those sales order items are delivered on time, which is not great. And we can now have a look at this end-to-end -end process. So have a look at the process, how it is really executed in James's company to get an understanding of why this on-time delivery rate is actually that low and what are the drivers for it. So what we see here in this first picture is basically the most frequent process variant. So this is more or less how an order to cash process should look like. So we receive the order. Two days later than that, we confirm it. 
Then at a later stage, we ship the goods and finally we clear the invoice or better, the customer pays its bill and then we are all happy. But as I said, this is only the first and most frequent variant that we observe for James's company. And we can now dig deeper and explore the inefficiencies that are taking place. So for example, if we have a look at the first and most frequent process or um, process deviation here, we have those credit checks. We directly see, okay, we have almost 190,000 credit checks that are considerably slowing down the process. So if we compare this here to the happy path that we've seen before, it takes us on average two days until we then confirm the order after having received it, compared to those seven days when we have those credit check approvals in between. I mean, credit check approvals do not necessarily have to be bad, but if we do this for the same customer again and again, and this is what we can analyze, we might maybe re-evaluate our rules here and our guidelines. And we can play this game further and further and we can add more process deviations to the graph. So for example, if we have a look at this, we have more than 40,000 price changes happening in the process and as we can see, really also slowing down the process significantly. And what we can do now, and this is the most important part, we can tie this back to our process performance. So if we now filter on exactly those process executions where we need it to change the price, how does this basically affect our on-time delivery rate? And the answer is right there. So we see our on-time delivery rates drops for the cases when we have price changes to 40%. And if we have a look at this drill down by region down below here, we see that for some reason, regions it's actually even worse with on-time delivery rates of, well, as less than 3%. And this is how you can, within a few clicks, really get from this whole set of your data to those crucial things and to the root causes of those inefficiencies taking place. And we can take this information to then make the process better. But we can also take it one step further and we can basically use exactly this knowledge, this data here, these insights to anticipate late deliveries before they are even there. And this is what we also did for James. So what we did there is we took the historical data from the SAP system, we enriched it with the data that we also found in the customized warehouse system, we fed it into our machine learning workbench to then be able to send out intelligent recommendations to our order managers of what to do next, next in currently ongoing processes. And that happens in real time. And if you think about it, integrating this machine learning workbench to our solution is extremely powerful because this allows you and us to really deploy all those kinds of machine learning models on top of your standardized process data. And then you can in the next step directly turn those insights into actions due to the integrations to our components. And the best news about this is you can also use it. So you can also use it with your academic license. So this is how the machine learning workbench looks like. So what you do here is, of course, you can import and install all the Python packages that you want to apply. We have also many, many out of the box process related Python packages that you can make use of to then first of all analyze your data, but also then to really directly turn insights into actions. And this is exactly what we also did for James and his colleagues to then be able to really empower them to become smarter, empower them to take the right actions at the right time, and in the end, ultimately, to ensure that Christmas presents are delivered on time. Thank you, and with that, I'm back to you. Thank you, Ruben. It's really glad uh, to hear that um, uh, Christmas presents are being uh, delivered on time. I just want to talk about a few more practical examples just to make it tangible that you can assign because we wanted to give you a feeling what the technology can uh, do. Um, so you see here an example which I really like to be honest. It's my most favorite one because it really shows like in the day-to-day -day work how process mining can change uh, how companies operate. And this is basically for Lufthansa. If a plane comes in and it goes towards uh, the, the gate, it needs to basically uh, 
tap on the gate, then you need to get the old passengers in, new passengers, uh, it needs to be refueled, serviced, maintained. It creates a lot of data traces. And what Lufthansa did last year is they took this, they did this completely on their own, utilizing the Intelligent Business Cloud and optimizes all their ground operations. So they have so-called gate controllers, and this is currently deployed only in a part of their operations, but already enables more than 8 million customers that they are better uh, like they arrive on time. So they're on time for the meeting, on time for the conference, on time for the birthday party or a business negotiation. It's a very powerful way. And now imagine this being scaled across all airlines and all kind of traffic operations. Massive potential. And this is also what makes it so exciting working in this domain, really going all in these different business processes. Um, Another customer which very early on, actually for Atzalonis, for us, it was very important to work with them because when we started, you might even laugh, for like the first and a half, one and a half years, we only worked on IT service management data. But then customers like Siemens and others were coming and asking us to apply to ERP data like SAP, Oracle, and they have been adopting this massively, making this a core system where they run the entire business on. So uh, pros mining is, now a recognized technology across 20 different industries, uh, more than 50% of the Fortune 500s are using the technology and also many mid-sized organizations. So it's a relevant uh, technology. The market is forecasted to grow to a size of 40 to 50 million. And this is also why it's so important that we basically work so closely with you. Because what you have seen in the demo, and when I walked it through with Ruben, it was really important for me that we show you also different type of components. Because this is all nuggets and things which are based on powerful research in the academic community, which we pull in, which we tie by closely working with our customers and work on that. So that's why it's near and dear to us at Salonis to work with the academic community. And since the start, we have strongly invested into that. And I wanna talk a bit about that. Our academic alliance is based on three pillars where we work with you there. The one is an education, the teaching basically of the next generation. It's very, very important. They have a strong desire to work with technology, to work with data, and giving them the environment, providing the access to the technology, but also the uh, in, uh, combined elements. The next thing is providing a vibrant community. I think that's very, very important, especially in this type of research, because we see so often that access to the data, working with customers, is really important. Also for our case, we started as a more or less academic project, and it only worked us for us, out for us, and we could determine it because we saw a relevant business problem. We had the right type of concepts and brought this together and built it in a powerful solution which we build our company on. And last but not least, research alliances. So really teaming up your uh, institutions with Celonis, with our customers, and working together there. Um, Jerome and his team have been doing a really a great work working together with you in building the Salonis Academic Alliance. It's strongly growing. Um, we're really happy that more than 20,000 academic users are working every day with the Academic Alliance edition of the Intelligent Business Cloud, which we provide free of charge for you, so you can work with techno this technology. So everything which you have seen here in the demo, you can afterwards go home, log in, and make sure that also your Christmas presents are arriving on time. What I also like find quite impressive, more than 400 academic courses in the last year have been run together. So really taking basically specific subjects and enabling our students to work with that, learn the new technology. And my personal highlight is the 150 theses. So really uh, students taking the time, going in a specific subject and extending the knowledge and what we know there. So if your logo is already there, thanks a lot for working with us. If it's not there, just approach us. We're really, really happy to work with you because I think there's so much more to be done. If you look just at the market, we have captured less than 1% of the global market. So there's 99% remaining. There's so many topics from an organizational, from a technological point of view. And we need to work together to build this because it will happen, but we need to set it up in the best potential way because we have the opportunity to shape it and use the best, uh, yeah, best knowledge to create it. So let's take out a few uh, success stories to make it really tangible how we have been working together successfully. Uh, thanks a lot to the colleagues at uh, TU Munich where basically they have uh, built a dedicated teaching curriculum around the use of process mining for the SAP environment. It's a blockbuster use case. There's enormous interest from the students but also from um, uh, companies to uh, have training in that area. What I also particularly like what we did with Prof. Katesh is embedding it closely into the actual teaching. So more than 10 different workshops going through all the different ranges of the teaching. So starting in the undergraduate, but also MBA, PhD classes. 
also very exciting is what the colleagues in the Netherlands are doing at Fontis. Not a generic course, but really focusing on a domain-specific application, dedicated process mining courses for applying process in finance and accounting. And this becomes more and more relevant because as it's a generic technology, it needs to be yeah, localized and yeah, brought into the different domains. So this is things where we collaborate very successfully in the teaching area. Also in the research area, there's exciting projects are going on and I want to just pick on a few, which I think uh, are really encouraging. One is really exciting is uh, on Monday, actually we presented a joint paper of the team uh, from Prof. Janisch uh, and uh, Celonis team here, basically on the hot topic of how RPA and uh, basically pros mining can support RPA projects. So identifying where to apply them, where it's sensible, where you can get the right level of benefit. But also things as we do with RWTH Aachen, joint research grants, um, filing there, working together, I think that's quite powerful. So this is just a few success stories and we want to provide the framework here from the Celonis side to really work as best as possible with you as the academic community. So as I said beforehand, more than 50% of the Fortune 500 company are using Celonis technology to optimize their processes. And the first thing when I talk with my customers, CEOs, CFOs, they say we need the right type of people. Should I build a new department? Where do I get the people from? And so we need to enable them and we need to provide it there. And that's why we invest strongly to provide you with the right framework. So there's free of charge access to the Celonis technology as well as all the training which we have available there. But Jerome and his team are not stopping there. They provide also the right coursework material, the right type of experts, guest lecturers, really to educate them. This is really important. We need to give the next generation the right type of tool to work with the data, to get the knowledge. So I would really encourage you, take off this opportunity. It's our investment to bring this to the next level. The next thing I already briefly touched on, which is our research alliances. We firmly believe that it's very important that we connect you as the academic partners, not only with Celonis, but most importantly with our customers. It's very often that customers approach us with specific problems, things which are beyond the current reach of the technology. And they are very open to share for specific business problems or specific data. And that's why we have uh, established a really a brokering hub to work together on certain problems to expand what we have there. And we will be acting very bullishly if new uh, things are coming up, if we see repeated patterns to bring this in our technology invest there. So this is basically the second pillar, um, the research alliance is to bring basically you of the community together. And this is working very well. Only in the last months we have filed for, uh, five uh, joint research grants together. This will even be accelerating as we're investing in this area. So as an entrepreneur, you learn every good presentation and it needs to end with a call to action. So um, yeah, I, I think if we look at the market, we see an enormous momentum. We have seen here a very uh, a powerful example how a relevant business problem is combined with an academic approach and is basically creating a new type of category which will yeah, basically establish yourself as a software market, as ERP, as CRM. And I just want to encourage you there. We want to work with you. Uh, we have basically our academic alliance team here in place, Jerome and the colleagues also at the, the booth. We really appreciate your partnership. We've built our company on the, your research ideas, the things you have brought out there, combining it. We see our role really as bringing it into application. So thanks a lot for the good collaboration and having us here as ISIS. Thank you. Thanks for a lovely presentation and um, to really bring life to the motto of this conference, which was information systems at the heart of innovation ecosystems. You showed the partners that have to play together and thanks a lot. Thank you. And uh, you have a heart to thank you and something to share. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who knows what to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, we're almost done. Before I go, we have to do one reminder. And the reminder is, why in the heck did I get cards in my goodie bag <laughs> for the conference? So you probably may or may not have opened them, but if you take a chance, open up your cards and look at the face cards, and you'll get another reminder of your conference experience because Helmut and I, the program chairs, the doctoral consortium chairs, our current president, Alan Dennis, and all three region reps 
are depicted on the face cards. So bring the home your reminder. Um, from my perspective, learn how to play hearts. That's a perfect experience for using these cards and um, enjoy the rest of the conference. So. So thank you all that you came to ICIS and that we're here to listen to the final keynote. We love to have you here. Thank you, Jane, for working with me. And um, well, we see you at the post-conferences and certainly next year in Hyderabad. Thank you. <laughs>